this is Amy. Thanks so much for stopping by. Tonight I'm going to show you how I painted this pumpkin design. I figure with fall just about here, um, I need to start doing some fall and holiday type designs for everyone. And so tonight I'm going to show you how I painted this cute little pumpkin design on a white stemless wine glass. Alright, so if you're new to my channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button so that you get all the, the uh, videos that I post. Also hit that notification bell and make sure you give me a big thumbs up if you like this video and share this video with your friends and family when we're done. Alright, the first brush I'm going to talk about is the Westonia Fine Line Brush. It's actually a fingernail painting brush. I'm going to be using a number 8 flat brush. It is a plaid one stroke brush for glass. And a number 10 flat brush, also a one stroke brush for glass. Then another fingernail painting brush, which is a flat number 5. It's a Donna uh, Dewberry, or I should say Dewberry U Pro brush. And then a dot stylist. Paints I'll be using tonight are Happy Green, Thicket, Warm White, and then I'm using three shades of orange. Pure Orange, Vivid Orange, and then Autumn Leaves. All these are Folk Art products. All of them are multi-surface except for the autumn leaves and the warm white. Those are the enamels. All of these are actually good for glass. Alright, so to get started, I have already washed my glass. That's the important thing when you're doing glass painting is that you make sure that you wash your glass before you start painting on it. You can wash it in soapy water, hit it with some rubbing alcohol afterwards or just at least make sure that you wash it. Alright, so to get started I'm going to start off with doing my design. Now if you're not good about doing things by freehand I would recommend, and I see some water in here so before I get to go any further I'm going to make sure I dry it out because when I tip it over guess what's going to happen? The water is going to run on my design. But anyhow, make sure that if you're not good at doing things by freehand, that you tape a picture or do some kind of drawing on it prior to painting so that your design is, is uh, you know, a nice design, something you're happy with. For this one, I'm just going to, I started up a little too high, going to do my own and the one thing I need to make sure that you understand is that no two designs are going to be alike when you're doing them this way. So if you're selling them, make sure you stress that to your customers because I hate for you to have customers that are expecting all the designs to be very similar, or the same I should say. They'll be similar, but not the same and make sure that they understand that. Now you can do this one of two ways. I'm going to go ahead and, and base paint a color underneath then to paint over it. I've tried it a few different ways but I figured this way is probably for me the better way just to get the opaqueness of the paint. And if you know me very well, you know that I do like my paint to be very opaque. So again, I'm just doing this by freehand. It's very easy if you're not someone that can do that, that you just tape a design on the inside and then follow your design when you're painting. Very easy, very, um, you know, a good way to do that if you're not not good at doing it on your own, whether it's drawing it or painting it at first. Either way is fine. And this is just one way that you can do it. There are several ways. 
and pumpkins are not always white or white orange I just painted kind of like a white with a little bit of orange in it a little bit of green in it on a hanger for a custom order and I really I liked how it turned out really did all right so I think I pretty much got it base cut I'm just kind of leaving a V up here for the stem to go into I might need to do some cleaning right in here as my brush touched all right so my next step then is going to be going into the next color which would be the pure orange and then I'm going to just kind of do a line like that and then I'll just come back over it and make it a little bit more opaque just keep working it. I don't think I like how the underneath of that turned out. If you feel like you're getting too much paint on your brush, feel free to scoop it off. I'm just touching that up because I didn't like how, how, how I left it. Alright, so we have this. I'm just starting at the part of the V coming down and then just trying to smooth it in here. Now you can you know, dip into the first color, which is the, the fall, the um, autumn leaf one. Alright, just kind of like making a C basically. And then just keep, keep painting it until you get the coverage that you desire. Now you can also, I have the other color here too, you know, dip that in there too just to make it pop a little bit. Your main thing is you want to either you're going to do some you know different color just to show the little you know a pumpkin has little creases in it. You you want that to stand out a little bit at least. Let's see how I did that one. Okay. And this way you, you have some time to play with it a little bit. Oops. Kind of working it with it fast right now. Now with this you can go ahead and try to work in the center too, you know, for coverage. I'm just basically focusing on where I want this particular color to be so pretty much in this area and again if you feel like it's not covering the way you want it to cover just make sure you go over it and get it to look the way you want it to look before you go on to the next color all right and I think that's looking pretty good I'm going to just kind of scoop my brush off a little bit and then we're going to go into the center one and we're just going to bring it down like that and that color is going back to the autumn leaf kind of doing the same there and then just filling this in so you're going to have quite a bit of paint on this pumpkin, really. Which, if you know my videos, you know what that's, that, that means. It's going to be more durable. The thicker your paint, without making it too thick, because you don't want it to bubble when you bake it, the more durability you're going to have of the paint on your glass. Trust me. This really does work. So I'm just painting it, smoothing it out a little bit. It's okay to have some little ridges because I want that to show up. Alright. And then here. 
All right, so there we go. Now I'm going to switch to my liner brush. And this is where I'm going to paint in the stem. Oh, you know what? I didn't tell you those colors. I'm sorry. I'm using real brown. And then I'm also using teddy bear brown. And then I'll throw in a little bit of the warm white. So I like to come down with my liner brush and just fill this area in. Actually, you can make it you know, a little bit thicker to fit this space. Or you can make sure that you, know, you don't have to have like the V shape like I did. You don't have to have it like that. But I like it. I like it like this. And then I'm going to just touch my brush into the teddy bear brown. And then just kind of, it's not double loading or anything like that, I'm just sticking it in. I'm kind of doing a little bit of a curvy, curvy branch. I'm going to stick it in a little bit into the warm white and just go over it. I just wanted to give it some interest, not just all be one color. And I'm going to go back in, just kind of blend it a little bit. I like that. Because you know on a pumpkin, branches or the vine stem kind of thing on a, on a pumpkin is never the same. They vary from one pumpkin to the next. All right, so with this little brush, I'm going to kind of wait here a few minutes. And I'm going to go about painting some, just some easy kind of one strokey leaves around it. Just so I'm not plopping a pumpkin on a glass and going about my day. And I want to look at my other one just to kind of see. I put a few little ones down here. Just kind of coming out. And with these, I'm trying to make them more opaque. For some reason, they're coming out kind of thin. Just do that. And then pull some out this direction. And I can go over. And if you feel like it's too thin, I mean, you can, if you want to wait for a little bit, and let it dry, you can, or just keep going. All right, then I'm going to put a little stem in here. I tie them together like that. And then I'm going to go up here. And I mean, they don't have to be the same. You can do, actually make them a little different so people can tell them apart. So one thing nice about painted glass is that you can tell with whose glass is whose when you're drinking. What a perfect gift. I mean, I just think painted glass is just so much fun. If you know somebody that drinks wine, even if they don't drink, you can still do painted glass. It doesn't, people don't have to, I mean, everybody drinks something. Right? Whether it's wine or pop, it just doesn't matter. And I'm trying to make these as thick as I can. Like I said, it really, I'm really interested in having the, the paint be more opaque. Then on the flip side, it's not, you know, hand washing is great for the, for the painted glass. All right. And you can do some other things. I mean, I've seen some other uh, designs going around the pumpkins that are kind of cute. And the top, I'm just kind of turning it with the lighter on the top. Still want to make this a little bit more opaque. And you don't have to do this kind of a leaf. You can do 
you know, make a variety of leaves or, you know, just do the simple like that. Just kind of simple, you know, just kind of fill in the glass and you don't have to do it all the way around. Um, you know, just keep it, keep it simple. Simple is good. All right, so then I'm going to go back to my little liner brush. Now, if you want, you can go ahead and hit this with a hair dryer or a heat gun for this next part. And I'm basically just doing like the little, I don't even know what they're called when you see them. The little, honestly, I don't, I, my, my mind is like kind of checked out for today. Those little swirlies, cute little swirlies to put up here. And that one has a little bit of orange on it, which is fine. But I'm going to go back in and kind of go over it a little bit lightly. So I get the brown in there and a little bit of the white. That's one thing I was going to say. If you want, you know, drying time, that's fine. Go ahead and give yourself some drying time or, or hit it with a hair dryer heat gun. And that way it'll be ready for you to use. And on this one, I am just going to use this little fingernail brush, hit my two different colors of green, and then I'm just going to come up here and just do some light little, kind of like pull leaves. So I didn't get green in there. Get some green in this one here, or a lighter green. Just have a little bit up around the top. Doesn't have to be a lot, just a little bit. And then I use my brush, the tip of my brush, which I'm going to do just so that they're the same. I should have used my stylus initially, but I am going to come back with the stylus and actually with this one, I'm doing a little bit different. Randomly place the dots and then I'm going to come back with this, my stylus and kind of smooth them out because my dots have those big tops to them, which can be kind of sharp. Okay, so this is getting a lot of paint on it, but anyhow, you get the gist of it. This just gives it some more color to it. You could paint little flowers if you wanted to. I'm just going to do the dots since I like dots a lot. It has some brown in it. Awesome. Alright, so then I'm going to take my stylus and kind of smooth them out a little bit. Just take the tips off. I mean, the tips are not completely gone, but they should not be as sharp as what they are now. One of the stories I told a while back when I was painting glass a lot to sell, I had dots around a sunflower glass that I made. And the lady was like, yeah, that, that is really sharp because I was afraid I was going to cut my hand. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's not good. That is not good. All right, so there we go. Cute little glasses. Make a little set. Give away as a gift. Enjoy your favorite beverage during the fall time. Doesn't have to be Halloween, but the fall. And there you go. Easy peasy. Next thing you do is put them in a cold oven, bake them at 350 degrees. Uh, make sure again, stressing the cold oven, turn on the oven, preheat it, add your preheat time to your bake time. Bake time is 30 minutes on these. If your oven takes 15 minutes, 20 minutes, whatnot, to preheat, make sure you add that to your bake time. And then when they're done, turn the oven off, let them dry completely, or not dry, but uh, cool down completely before you pull them out. The danger is making a quick change in temperature is what causes glass to break. So, alright, I hope you enjoyed this video. Once again, make sure you give me a big thumbs up and you share this video with your friends and family. There's a share button underneath the video. Very easy to share. And until the next time, have a good one.